Hello and welcome back to 4000 and Counting. I'm Wattie, this is Mark. You've just had our NIHL All-Star Team of the Year. Interested to see some of your opinions. Some agree, some disagree. And we're going to roll in to our Elite League Team of the Year. We're going to start with the goalies. And obviously, Besco, if you've already watched, Besco was our goalie of the year in the Elite League. So it goes without saying that he's going to be in our All-Star Team. Treble champ, champ, champ. Mark, who's our second goalie? Had to be Greenfield. We've spoke about him a lot, and rightly so. He deserves to be in our team as well. He has a 92.01 save percentage and a 2.22 goals against average. And there's another stat that I liked. He's played 1,000... No, sorry, 3,000... 3,000. One... Yeah, 3,000, 165 minutes on the ice, which is incredible. But there's one more goalie in the league that's played more minutes than him this year. And, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious, Mark. It's pretty obvious. Shout out Shane Owen. 3,235 minutes. Straight savage. Just like a savage. We haven't talked about the amount of like games that he played this year. Obviously, we've talked about Greenfield a few times and how good he's been. Although he finished playing for the five outside the playoffs, he was still over 90% in all of those games. So there's one man that packs his lunch pail and turns up to work every single day, Shane Owen. So shout out that savage. Yeah. Um, let's go to the D. And I think the first name on the list for me was Gabe Bast. This guy is the real fucking deal. He is smooth out there. He's a smooth operator. Again, he's a treble champion. How could you not have him on the list? I really liked him. There's a, You could have had a few at Belfast D. You really could. They you could have put their whole team in there, couldn't you? Well, I mean, yeah, you probably could have. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a bit of a piss take, but we can't, probably could have put pretty much their entire lineup in. So if you're in Belfast and you don't make it, sorry, lads, we try to just mix it about a little bit. <laughs> just pass the biscuit around a little bit. The other the other D-man, we had to go with the, the top scoring Brit of the year. Podcast favourite, Mr. Ben O'Connor, 50 points on the season. Exceptional season for Guildford, finishing second. Hell of a hell of a run for them all the way up until the last weekend of the season. Qualified for the Continental Cup, so Guildford are going to Europe. Hopefully, Benny's there and he gets to go to Europe with them, and that'd be awesome. With the Belfast Giants winning, 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 it just meant that that spot's going to go to Guildford in the Continental Cup. So that's really exciting. Six years into their elite league hockey existence, and Ben O'Connor was a big part of getting them there. So. Oki is on that list. Next Rightly up, Rightly so. When you when you think with O'Connor as well, is Jamal Watson came out, uh, Elite League All-Star, and he put up a lot of points. And a lot of Flames fans are a bit like, oh, like, crap, look what's happened. And then O'Connor comes in and puts up 50. Yeah. It's as awesome. a Brit. As yeah. a Brit as well. Unbelievable. Um, Absolutely phenomenal season. Nathaniel Halbert from Coventry. Really liked him, really liked his performances this season. He was very good on that Coventry Blaze team at the back end. Solid. Wore a letter as well, which is obviously... You're right there, mate? <laughs> which, is <laughs> obviously, which, is obviously, which is obviously huge. Just the the performances that he put in across across the entire season was awesome. And there's, there's so many different ways you could go with this Elite League team because there's so, so many good players in the Elite League. Just looking at like Guildford's roster alone, how good they were the entire season. Cardiff, they've got some good D man, and one of them has made our team, and that is Marcus Crawford. He's played 54 games, nine goals, 48 assists, 57 points, running over a point a game, which is phenomenal. I forgot Gabe Bass's stats as well. 16 plus 39, 55 points. So these D men getting it right done from the back there. Some phenomenal performances. Just moving down into, I'm just trying to find their stats right now. God, who's Jude? Yeah. No, I've got it right now. Hand. Nathaniel Halbert, forty games, eleven goals, thirty-one assists, forty-two points. Another team man that's over a point per game, which is wicked. If you're a coach, that's exactly. And what isn't you he want. in the GB squad as well? He is in the GB squad. So a couple of GB, GB uh, squad members in our lineup here. You might see a bit of a theme. One of the guys that I think went under the radar this year, I really, really liked Bradley Lalonde from the Guildford Flames. 49 games, 10, uh, 10 goals, 28 assists, 
um, in the plus rating on the plus minus a plus 12, which is solid over the course of the year. I know Bandy used to, Bandy used to love that stat more than everybody. And then speaking of being in love with this, the stat, our last D man, Sam Root from the Belfast Giants, 46 games, six goals, 29 assists, 35 points, 45 pims, plus 48. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and again, heading into the GB squad. So we could be in good shape at the World Champs because three of the podcast all stars are in your are in your GB national squad. So we'll take that. Two two uh, reclassifieds and obviously Oki. It's it's that's good news for GB. We had some tough decisions there to be made. There was there's other fantastic players in the elite league defensively and them boys all pretty much at a point of game just about and um, bringing all sorts defensively. I hadn't realised before we came on Sam Roop's um, plus minus numbers. In fact, let me see if we can click on the Elite League thing. I don't know if it go if you can click on the top and it gives you like the to best. See who's at the top. David Goodwin. Okay, well let's move on to our forwards because a couple of them are in this top list right now, so it make our life <laughs> it, it'll make our life real easy. So one of our forwards is Belfast Giants captain, probable winner, David Goodwin. 53 league games, 15 goals, 55 assists, 74, 70 points, plus 53. Fucking lights out, plus 53. Yeah. Scott Conway, they held him off the score sheet at the weekend, but he was phenomenal throughout the entire season. They got right in his face in the final. I thought Cardiff played him very well. They played him tight. They were aggressive. And I liked his battle. I liked his fight. He had a bit of fuck you about him. And you, you got to love that. Um, Scott Conway, 51 games, 40 assists, 50, uh, 40 goals, 51 assists, 91 points, plus 53. So these boys are put, uh, by the way, Sam Root was uh, plus 48. He was third in the league. Crawford, he was in there with our DMN, plus 47. Gabe Bass was in there, plus 45. Matt Petgrave got a lot of shit this year yeah, about his turnovers and shit like that. Plus 41. Ben O'Connor, same thing, plus 33. Like These guys are making a difference at both ends of the ice, whether you like it or not. You know, they might make more turnovers because they have the puck more. I say that, I say that quite a lot, but... You got, you got to give these guys a puck. They're on the ice at the big opportunities and the big times and games. And they're the sort of players you want out there. Uh, a favourite of yours this year, going back to the forwards, and we go with a couple of a couple of Guildford Flames. Daniel Tedesco, absolute lights out. And another man that's king of the fuck year, Brett Ferguson. He's got that in spades. He's also got points in spades. If you want to talk us through those two boys' stats of the year? Tedesco, 31 plus 49, 80 overall in 53 games. Like Solid. you said, he's one of my favourite players. I see him the year before. I knew he'd come on to good things here. Um, yeah, he's shown that with Guildford. Hopefully he'll be another re-sign in there. And Ferguson, he's been a big fan's favourite there. And the players speak very highly of him. He has 53 games. Uh, sorry, yeah, 53 games. He has 22 plus 45 for 67 overall. Yeah, I like what he brings. I like his game. I'd love to talk to him on here. I know the Guildford, yeah. a couple of Guildford fans at the weekend came up and asked me if we get him on. We will get him on. Yes, we will. Another man that I would love to get on this podcast had a phenomenal season in Manchester. Sheffield will be kicking himself that they didn't get him to go back. Anthony DeLuca, top five in scoring throughout the year, point, uh, goal scoring on a sixth, seventh place Manchester team. That is phenomenal. And just he turned up to work every night Good things said about him in the games that um, some of the guys that we've chatted to that like, played against him said he was very good and he's had a very good year. What's his What was his final totals there, Mark? So he was forty six games, twenty nine plus twenty four for fifty three points. Yeah, exceptional, exceptional. You talent. said there about Sheffield kicking themselves. That is what they were missing. Yeah, they were just a clinical finisher. Yeah, they were. They really were because that we don't have. Do we have any Steelers in our? I don't think we do. No, no. Actually, it's a fair, fair no? show. No, and that's no, not don't. that's not by design either. Oh, we we have we have Greenfield. Oh yeah, of course we do. But, yeah, yeah. But Sorry, no, was... but no outfield, no outfield. Yeah, which is crazy because they out, outfield. What the fuck are you on about? What the fuck am I on about I'm football? Football manager. <laughs> it's um yeah, that's not done by design, Sheffield fans. 
I mean, you'd argue, you would you could probably argue there's a couple of guys that could be in the mix, but I think the team that we got in front of us now is lights out. The next the next two are Cox and Sanford, a pair of Cardiff Devils. Can't really think of one without the other. Both both boys had very, very good seasons, put up fantastic points, and you know, a big part of that. Trevor Cox, 53 games, 16 goals, 50 assists for 66 points, and then right on his tail, one one less game. 52 uh, 52 games for Cole Sanford, 38 goals right up there in the mix at the top top scorers, 27 assists for 65 points. Again, plus minus, not as not as big as um the the Giants by any stretch of the imagination, but still 33 and 34, good numbers, are crucial for what the Cardiff Devils are doing. They're going to want those boys re-signed for next year, I would imagine. Sanford, 38 goals, yeah, definitely have him back. I'd have both of them back in a heartbeat. Yeah, I'd have both of them back, yeah. yeah Just absolutely. pointing out that 38 goals is oh, yeah, solid. Big. Yeah, very big. Um, Mark Cooper from the Belfast Giants. Exceptional year. Very good at the weekend. Big game player. Big, strong, skates well, carries a puck well, takes the puck to the net. I really like his game. I mean, we could have picked a number of Giants. We really could. Um, Steve Aury. Absolute lights out in the playoffs. I think he was over a point a game in the league. I'm sorry if I'm getting his last name wrong, but I really like his game. Did it make the team? But you could have argued he could have been in there. There's a few guys. Next man on, on the list is another Guildford Flame, Ryan Tate. This guy is grease lightning out there. Wheels. He flies, flies. And his points, although we talked about him, we always talk about him for his speed and everything else and what a good player is. His points went under the radar this year. Sixty-two points in fifty-four games, twenty-eight goals. That kind of we, whenever we talked about it, we just talked about him. Very good player. He's fast. I don't think I've actually checked his stats. I always just liked how he played. It wasn't until like the last few weeks of the season you're like, shit, the guy's got sixty odd points. He's like, he's the real deal. And when you consider Conway beat everybody else by twenty, so Conway beat everybody else by twenty. The next. Well, according to this, no, by 11 points, according to this. I'm not sure if it's fully up to date, but yeah. Based 11. on... based on. Lee. Oh, no, sorry, that was right. No, I remember now. He beat Tedesco by 11 and then everybody else by 20. That was right. So, yeah, so other than Tedesco, the next closest being 20, there's a bunch of the guys that are in our, in our roster right through. you got... Goodwin, Ferguson, Cox, Sanford, Tate. They're all in and amongst it. There's other guys that could easily be in this roster, folks. This is why these these decisions are hard, even harder for the Elite League. They've only got 10, 10 slots. And the Elite League teams are voted on by the coaches. And it was quite interesting at the weekend. Got to hear a couple of reasons why a couple of guys got picked. And it was interesting. And I, I think that's a pretty, pretty solid ice hockey team right there. If you had that to watch every week, you wouldn't be pissed off. That'd be solid. I'd love to see that in the Champions Hockey League, that's for sure. It's got a Champions Hockey League roster vibe about it. And then I would just add a couple of mutants. Um, <laughs> who would I add to that lineup? If I was taking that lineup to the Champions League, I'm going to add Mark Richardson. I'm going to add Robert Dowd. How many oh, Brits have I, how, many, in there. how many Brits have I got? Yeah, let's have a look. How many Brits have I got in there already? So we got Oki, Conway, Halbert, Roop. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Dowdy, Richie. I'd have Lake, definitely. Maybe Lake and Ben Davis. If they were to go to the Champions League, that's 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 the British boys I'd want to take with me. They got it all about them, and but yeah, that's our elite league team of the year. Let us know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Who would you have in? Who would you take out? And why? Not don't just be like, well, this guy because I play, I support Sheffield, and he plays for Sheffield. A little bit more to it than that is, you know, did he take five or six games in a row and a scruff of the neck? Was he scoring game winners left, right, and center? Let let us know. Make it a bit interesting. But there's. There's an absolute wagon of a roster there. But guys, this has been fun. It's been another another year. Wrap up. We are done. It's Team yeah. GB time. It's interviews thick and fast here on out. We're going to be doing more content. 
next video out we're going to be uh we're going to have a little discussion we're going to have a little guess where we think the Bainstoke Bison players might end up just before they start getting signed for a bit of fun because the Bainstoke Bison players have got to play somewhere next year and I think I think we get 75% right which on a roster of 20 guys I'll take what do you reckon do you reckon that's too much too much is that too much pressure to put on ourselves to get right that mean we're allowed to get like six, five or six wrong. That win, with a bit of your inner knowledge. I think no, 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 not no, no. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go to the well. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hit up anybody for any. I'm just gonna pure. Okay, go on gut feel. I'm gonna go on gut feel. That's I'm pretty go confident. I've got, I've got to say, seventy five percent is pretty confident. But well, I'm right. not gonna knock your ability. We've got logistics, i.e., yeah. uh, geography. Well, there's no Basin Stoke rink, there's no Bracknell rink. Okay, so those boys have got to play somewhere. So where's the next closest teams? Well, the Flames are in the Elite League. So unless you're Zach Milton going to the Elite League, which I think there's a possibility, the other boys are going to go Bracknell, Slough, Solent, Swindon, Bristol, maybe one or two to MK or Romford or what, however it yeah. may be. But... They're going to be the tricky ones, and that's what's going to make it fun. That's what's going to make it a fun video, and that's why you guys are going to hit subscribe. That's why you're going to come back, and that's why you're going to watch. We will see you again very, very soon for another episode. Peace. Peace.